These deaths have been happening for a long time. There's no questions. They happen with some regularity. And almost always in law enforcement custody. That's right. A two-year investigation tied to two words. Two words. We link to hundreds of deaths. On the ground. Sit down. For decades, excited delirium didn't just explain the deaths. It excused them. This year in Colorado, our investigation prompted legislators the vote is eight to, three. Uh, to finally and effectively ban the term. But even that left unanswered one big question. Is she in today? Uh, she's currently not available. What to do with the deaths still linked to excited delirium? Guess she doesn't want to talk. Faced with an office unwilling to examine its own role in this, we found two experts willing to re-examine the work. I have no doubt that his case is a homicide. None. That's a homicide, and it should be reflected as such. What we found has implications not just with this one death here in Colorado, but for hundreds of deaths nationwide. To say these people died of excited delirium is really wrong. That's not what's going on. I'm here because of the National Association of Medical Examiners annual meeting. It's being held here in Denver. For 30 years, Dr. Victor Whedon has devoted his life to the study of death. I am a forensic pathologist. Board certified? I am board certified. Weeks prior to his arrival, we asked him to review the autopsy of a man who died here in Colorado. Once here, we asked him this. Did the Adams County Coroner's Office get this conclusion wrong? Yes. I believe for sure they got it wrong. Good afternoon, Adams County. The death Adams County coroner Monica Brancusha Jordan suggested was the result of something known as excited delirium was, in Dr. Whedon's mind, the result of something else entirely. Is this a homicide? Yes. The death would not have occurred but for the actions of the police. But for the actions of police. Not a crime per se. Prosecutors, not pathologists, determine that but a homicide nonetheless because someone else caused it. It's the same thing another board-certified forensic pathologist told us after she reviewed the case. I have no doubt that his case is a homicide. None. Dr. Jan Gorniak has thousands of autopsies to her name. If you say, explain what led up to his death, you will end with, he was restrained face down. Forget what started it. This is how it ended. Copy reference 91st in here on street. His is a story rooted in assumptions. He deserved it, had it coming. For 21, I need an EGA at medical. This is what happens when someone with meth in their system runs from police. 421, I need the uh, medical code three parties turned uh, unresponsive. I copy there en route. 63 starting CPR. 421, advice, fire, CPR's in progress. We're gonna have to scoop this guy and go or we need an ETA. Alex Gutierrez's death in 2017 under the knees, arms, and bodies of arresting Thornton police officers led to all sorts of assumptions. Few more consequential than the one bearing the signature of the elected Adams County coroner. So I was very young, wasn't prepared to have to bury my father. Avina DeLuna was 19 when she first encountered the two-word term. I didn't know what excited delirium was at the time. Even then, it was a controversial assumption, one tied to a theory that a body can become so excited, a mind so delirious, that the heart suddenly stops. When your father died, mm -hmm. who else paid attention? Nobody. DeLuna assumed she'd hear from people who'd share the same questions she had. She was wrong. No media attention, just nobody cared. Get medical somebody. To be fair, we here at Nine News didn't do much on the story either, at least not at first. I only came across the Gutierrez death years later while looking into local district attorney decisions not to prosecute in-custody deaths. There it was, excited delirium. But the more I learned, the more inconsistencies I found. For example, if excited delirium is appropriately named, Four times this one, status. Then why did Gutierrez, yeah, why did he show zero signs of delirium? 
while twice saying these words. And why was this knee, that knee right there, on the back of a handcuffed and immobile Gutierrez. A particularly important detail considering during a subsequent interview, a fellow officer said, definitely no knee in the back, he said. Obviously, we've been through enough training and enough things where that's not the best position. Even the medics wondered what happened. I don't think he had the local DA called a decision to not immediately turn on the body cameras inexcusable, said the officer's initial reluctance to do interviews threatened to diminish the trust and respect of citizens. Yet when the Adams County coroner called the death a result of excited delirium, the investigation stopped and all officers were cleared. Oh, it's cold. I mean, it's been seven years, no answers. I'm going to do what I have to do until my father's autopsy report is changed. In early 2023, the National Association of Medical Examiners, or NAME, told coroner's offices around the country to stop using the term excited delirium on autopsy reports and death certificates. Not long after, Avina and her mom started writing, calling, and emailing the Adams County Coroner. Over time, each inquiry resulted in variations of this response. We will not review your dad's death. How do you feel you've been treated by the coroner's office? Like garbage. I was told, you know, to stop emailing them. They're not going to respond. Faced with that, in 2024, Nine News found two forensic pathologists willing to do the job the Adams County coroner would not. Both just so happened to be named board members an organization even the coroner told us is the leading association in forensic medicine and pathology in the country. After the two examined the file, each told us the Adams County coroner got her assumption wrong. I would encourage them to not only look at the case, but sit down face to face with um, Avina. Do you believe that the Adams County coroner has an obligation to review this case? Yes, yes, because this is a case where it's very clear in the evidence. Excited delirium lacks medical backing. As of 2024, no major medical organization says it could kill. And yet, as our investigation discovered, through the largest review of its kind ever done, it remains the suspected or listed cause in the deaths of more than 225 people across the U.S. since 2010. Almost all died during or after law enforcement restraint. We, I'd never heard it before. And there are more fingers on a hand than there are deaths on our list that have been formally reviewed. The death of 16-year-old Eric Parsa in Louisiana is one of the very few. It just, it just didn't make sense. Darren and Donna Lou Parsa recite the moments of that day in 2020 with the kind of hesitancy you'd expect from parents who saw what they saw. So it was all just a blur. It was, it was just, it was literally being a nightmare. Surveillance video shows the parking lot just outside the laser tag Eric Parsa had grown to love. It also shows the start of what the family called a meltdown, seen by someone inside that laser tag. And she said, would you like me to call the police for help? And I said, and I said yes, and that's the biggest mistake of my life. I regret it every day. That's Darren trying to convince his son to get in the car. I always think, God dang it, if I had just had 30 more seconds, I, he, he would have got in. Seconds later, a responding Jefferson Parish deputy got on top of Eric and sat and sat and sat. They just kept, man, let us do our job. Let us, you know, let us do, you know, let us do our business, let us do our job. Nine minutes face down. The deputy on top of him weighed more than 300 pounds. He looked terrified. He was, there was just fear in his eyes, so it was horrible. Days later, an exoneration was built on a two-word explanation. They put as the primary cause of his death at the, you know, at the time was excited delirium. Yeah, the main thing was the, yeah, the excited delirium. In the days and the weeks and the months after that, I started ruminating more on this is BS, you know, I mean, excited. this doesn't make sense. You know, the excited delirium. No way, they thought, not Eric, no way. He'd done this before. Eric didn't ask to have autism. He struggled 
throughout his life with something he didn't ask for. Explainable, diagnosable autism. It changed nothing. Excited delirium remained on the autopsy and death certificate for years. And then last year, as part of this investigation, a reporter with our sister station asked the Jefferson Parish coroner about that term. Out of respect for the, the family, I, I'm, I'm not going to discuss the particulars of that case. He would, he said, discuss them with the family, which led to a conversation. We went into, I guess, more depth on Eric's history. It worked. A review of the case followed, and that led to this. He said that they had decided to take out excited delirium from the death certificate. To have the right diagnosis and to not blame Eric for his own death is, is very important. And that, I guess, gives a truer picture of what did happen that day. In 1995, the U.S. Department of Justice warned law enforcement officers not to linger on the backs of handcuffed suspects. As soon as the suspect is handcuffed, get him off his stomach to help minimize the potential for in-custody death. Nearly half of the deaths we tied to use of the term excited delirium happened when someone was face down or prone. Okay, what's going on? Uh, there's an old guy... He's broken several windows. In 2010 in Illinois. Unknown male subject. 14 zero. Police tased. Suspects have tased multiple times. And then got on top of the back of a man named Patrick. Last name is Burns. Burns. B-U-R-N-S. Patrick J. John. Patrick J. John Burns. I'm the younger brother of Patrick Burns. Yeah, he was my friend. He was the best man at my wedding. I was the best man in his, and I'd never heard of excited delirium before. Richard Burns, like many family members we met, was confused when it turned up on his brother's autopsy. And it shouldn't be used as a cause of death because it doesn't cause death. In 2023, or 13 years after the death, Richard Burns told the story of his brother to a new coroner in town. That coroner then found two outside forensic pathologists to review the death, who then found this. Both of those uh, board-certified forensic pathologist concluded that there was no excited delirium. Had Pat's death certificate amended, so now Pat's death certificate reads that Pat died of positional asphyxia and that the manner of death was homicide. Of the 225 deaths on our list, we know of just three that have been reviewed and reversed, and only one that led to charges. More on that in a bit. Three out of more than 225. That's a problem, says Eric Parsa's mother. If this is no longer being looked at as a, as a credible diagnosis by the medical community, then reopen it and see, then what did this person die of? Police and fire dispatch. There's this guy walking around in his underwear. He seems like out of it. Months after the death of Alex Gutierrez in 2017 in Adams County, Colorado, another man died in law enforcement custody. 371 from Adams, Southside. Paul Egley died face down under the bodies of arresting officers. Oh, we're starting CPR. Starting CPR at 2043. The Adams County coroner looked at the case and concluded once again the restraint didn't kill him. Excited delirium did. Hey, stop right there. Stop. Stop. I have a right to stop you because you're being suspicious. Oh, well, no, I am an introvert. Please stop. respect Attention the boundaries that I am to. speaking. Two years later, the same office theorized excited delirium might be to blame for the death of Elijah McClain. Three times the medical examiner put it in his conclusion. It proved vital in the local DA's decision not to charge any officer or paramedic involved. How do we know? He told 60 Minutes that a few years ago. Did the excited delirium being included in the autopsy make your job easier or harder in terms of making your final determination? That's a good question. Uh, and the answer to that question is it made it easier um, because it, you're missing a key element to a homicide investigation. You can't file a homicide charge without cause of death. Critically, when the office faced national scrutiny for its initial McLean autopsy, it decided to do another one. Here's the medical examiner employed by the coroner explaining why when asked about it during the 2023 criminal trial for the paramedics. Who decided to amend your report in this case? 
I did based on new material that came to life, material that I had requested initially. Did anyone, any pressure from anyone influence your cause of death determination? Uh, no, this was uh, based on uh, my findings, my review, and my discussions with the coroner, and we were on the same page. So she didn't pressure me either. New information, said Dr. Steven Cena, led to a new review and ultimately a new cause of death. And that led to a grand jury investigation and ultimately criminal indictments. More information came to light. I feel that I saw all the body camera footage and that enabled me to reach a final cause and manner of death. Which brings us back to the 2017 death of Alex Gutierrez. And this knee on Gutierrez's back, the same knee a fellow officer claimed was never there. My father was a human, he was a dad. <laughs> Despite his background, how he was raised, the color of his skin, he was a human being who didn't deserve to die that way. Avina DeLuna also knows we found this, an email sent by the coroner, Monica Brancusha Jordan, to another reporter in town. We obtained it through an open records request. In it, she told the reporter, I have chosen to exclusively provide you with the information below. Below, she wrote, witness reports do not place Scooter as prone when he went unresponsive. Remember, prone is face down. It is a claim that is clearly refuted in this body camera video. Unresponsive and prone. Even the local DA said so. At no point during the recording does Mr. Gutierrez appear to make any voluntary movement, he wrote in this report. As a physician, we owe it to not only our patients, but our patients' families to give them the answers that they're seeking. We met Dr. Jan Gorniak in Denver when she attended the annual meeting of the National Association of Medical Examiners as a board member. Her review of the autopsy report, she told us, left her no doubt. Did Alex Gutierrez die from excited delirium? No, he did not. Is it a problem that excited delirium still shows up on this man's death certificate? It is. That's a homicide, and it should be reflected as such. When I asked fellow name board member Dr. Victor Wheaton if he too would review the autopsy file, he asked me if I could get him one more thing. What did you ask me for? I asked for the emergency medical services report. That EMS report, he said, might provide not just a clue, but an answer. I now believe we have a scientific explanation of these deaths. Dr. Whedon says he wanted to see if the Automated External Defibrillator, or AED, used by the paramedics documented what's known as a non-shockable heart rhythm, critical for an AED because it would then tell paramedics not to use it, not to jolt the patient. In this report we obtained, he says he found what he calls not just a clue, but an answer. What did it say? The, the emergency medical services report it showed that this person had pulseless electrical activity, PEA. This is all non-shockable rhythms. PEA, it's right there. So when you saw PEA in that report, what did you think? I knew immediately this is another case of uh, prone restraint cardiac arrest. Due to something known as metabolic acidosis, which can lead to PEA. Think of it this way. As we breathe, we inhale oxygen and exhale carbon dioxide, or CO2. Should you find yourself unable to purge the CO2 from your system, your body can, in essence, turn on itself. In practical terms, we physicians typically say we blow off CO2, and that's really the treatment for a metabolic acidosis. And if you're unable to blow off that CO2, for example, being prone on the ground, that buildup of lactic acid can continue and you can get metabolic acidosis in a way that can shut your heart off. And die. This is what killed Gutierrez, he said. To say these people died of excited delirium is really wrong. That's not what's going on. Earlier in 2024, also in an email to that reporter at another TV station, Bronchusha Jordan said, removing excited delirium does not change that this individual had methamphetamine on board. Simply put, the cause of death on this case can also be stated as toxic effects of methamphetamine. Dr. Whedon says, the presence of PEA tells him that's impossible. 
stimulant. It's not the, the stimulant drug. It's not excited delirium. Here is a very good explanation that's well documented. The coroner had these emergency medical services report. I just don't think they recognized what it told them. In 2024, we repeatedly sought to ask Bronchusha Jordan if anyone in her office looked at the body camera that showed Gutierrez prone. Hi, my name is Chris Vanderveen. I'm a reporter with Nine News. Is Monica here? We also wanted to know why she told a reporter Gutierrez wasn't prone when he went unresponsive. Is she in today? Uh, she's currently not available. Do you know when she might be available? Uh, yeah, I don't govern her schedule, so you would have to reach out to her. Every time, the elected coroner elected to dodge us. One time when she saw our camera while leaving work, she decided to quickly go back to work. It's her. It's her? Okay. Another time she saw us while driving into work, she stopped, waited, reversed, and then gave us a clear indication she had no intention of coming to work that day with us around. Guess she doesn't want to talk. Days later, she sent this email to the general manager of Nine News, my boss. In it, she called me incompetent, threatened me with criminal prosecution should I approach her again in her public office, and added my decision to try to ask her questions was misogynistic. Good afternoon, Adams County. She has yet to answer the two most critical questions. When police have held down somebody too long, when they need to better breathe, they can cause somebody's death. Police restrain them, and in that restraint, they hold them down, and sometimes too long, and it causes death. They don't intend to cause the death, but they do intend to restrain them. Dr. Wien believes this might very well explain the deaths of the bulk of the people on our list, deaths previously attributed to excited delirium. You believe George Floyd died from this? I do. You believe Elijah McClain died from this? I do. These deaths have been happening for a long time. They have. There's no questions. They happen with some regularity. And almost always in law enforcement custody. That's right. In 2024, largely as a result of our reporting, the state of Colorado prohibited use of the term excited delirium on autopsy and police reports from now on. But it, like all other states, has no plan to deal with deaths previously tied to the now largely discredited term deaths like the one we stumbled upon in Adams County, Colorado, while looking through records. One of more than 225 we've now tied to that term. With no requirement to review any, people like Avina DeLuna say, the only available option now is to hope that a coroner might be willing to admit it might have made a mistake. Do the right thing for not only me, for my family, for my son. Just do the right thing.